Well, centuries after the death of Leonardo da Vinci, his art, inventions, and ideas continue to fascinate the modern world. And now his ideas and their impact on modern technology are being examined in a new children's book. It's called Neo Leo, The Ageless Ideas of Leonardo da Vinci. Please join me in welcoming author Gene Beretta. Gene, great to see you again. Oh, nice to see you. You were on our show not too long ago with the great book Now and Ben that introduced children to Ben Franklin. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, I mean, both of these books follow a, a similar theme. Both, both of these men invented things that were way ahead of their time, <clears throat> excuse me, and these inventions have gone on to affect and, and uh, the world we know today. You want to inspire children by how uh, Leonardo da Vinci inspired you as a child, possibly? He did. He certainly did that. I just, most people know him for his paintings, but I wanted to expose children to all the incredible things he invented, just hundreds and hundreds of years before anybody started thinking about them. And some of these inventions are in use today. Well, most of them are. I mean, you've got, he had designs for the airplane, as you see there. The Wright brothers were the first to fly, but when we look back in his notes, we see that he was he had all sorts of airplanes and flying machines in mind. He had um, one of my favorites is he understood how blood moved through the heart. And we've only just started to understand this within the last few decades through all of our imaging systems. But just by watching nature and watching how seeds move through the vortexes of water, he imagined that that might be the way that blood moves through the heart valves and open and, cl and opens and closes the heart valves. Things that are just that amazing. Um, or in his notes. <laughs> Is it possible that he was the world's best observer? Well, he's at least one of them. I mean, and look what he learned from observing. That's, you know, that he, point at least can be made for him. Observe birds, even leaves falling from trees. Well, right, like the leaves falling from trees inspired him to start thinking about the first gliders, things like that. He invented the cat, which not many people realize. He invented the color orange. Not many people realize. He invented orange? <laughs> well, that's, at least that's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> he had his quirky side, though. Right. He had a specific way of writing that confounds people to this day mm. as to why he did it. Well, right. He wrote in what is called mirror writing, uh, which is backwards, and he was left-handed. It's backwards. It's backwards, right. So he wrote everything backwards. Right. All of his notes are backwards. There are a couple theories. Some say it's to protect his notes, um, keep them more secretive, because some were, were thought to be very controversial. Um, there's another theory that since he was left-handed and wrote with a, you know, very runny ink, going left to right, you'd be smearing the ink as you went across the page, and maybe this was an easier way to keep the notes fresh and clean. Well, your background is as an illustrator, and you illustrated for many celebrities in their children's book. Mm. And the last several years, you've been doing your own, own books. You can see the illustrations. They are, are absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Did you, were you impressed by his illustrations? Because he was a great oh, sure. illustrator as well. Oh, I mean, he's one of the masters. That's how I became introduced to him, through uh, my, my fifth, sixth grade art teacher, who I dedicate the book to, turned me on to Leonardo's art. And just because, you know, remaining a big fan of his, you know, later you learn more and more about so many other things that he did, like Benjamin Franklin. They were just both true Renaissance men. You know. Was there one Leonardo da Vinci discovery or future invention that fascinated you more than all the others? Well, the valve was one. He also created robots, and he uh, mainly by using cogs and wheels and levers and powering them with water and things like that. He designed and built robots for pageantry and the, and the courts of his day. Uh, there was a robot knight, a robot lion that moved across the floor and opened up and flowers spilled out. And, um, and there are even, what's most fascinating to me too is that now modern day engineers are using his notes and building his designs based specifically on his designs and many of them are working. And so we know that he wasn't just fantasizing, he had practical knowledge that these things could work, and, and it's, it's true. It's an, uh, it's an amazing story, and it's a great book, especially for children, too. The book, Neo Leo, The Ageless Ideas of Leonardo da Vinci. And what's really nice is you brought a copy of this book for everybody on our studio audience today. Right. <laughs> and you have a book signing coming up this weekend on Saturday. That's right. Right. Uh, I'll be... Um, Another author illustrator named Matt Phelan and I will be at Children's Book World this Saturday at 11 a.m. signing and reading and answering questions. So please come out and see us. Right in Haverford, right on the Haverford, main line. Haverford, Pennsylvania, right. All right, Gene Beretta, thank you so much. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on this latest book, Leo Lido. Laurie? Hey, Bill. Coming up next.
next, it's a lesson in hair repair. Dr. Susan Taylor is here with some do-it-yourself solutions for dry, damaged hair when we come back.